Hey everyone, I got another tech lesson for you. Today we're going to be checking the valves and adjusting them if necessary. Your valves should be checked about every 15 hours, especially if your bike is backfiring or hard to start or just running bad in general. For this task we're just going to need basic hand tools like wrenches, screwdrivers, sockets, and allen wrenches. And then also we're going to need a torque wrench, a magnet, feeler gauges, some engine oil, and some shop towels. First thing we're going to do is pull the two seat bolts out and then pull the seat off. And then I like to always put the bolts in back into the thread so you don't lose the bolt. After that we're going to pull the shrouds off. There's four bolts for each shroud and it's a good idea to put the bolts back into the threads so you know which one goes where. So once the shrouds are off, we got to pull the tank strap off and then if you have an hour meter mounted up on the front bolt, we got to pull that off also. And then just pull that bolt holding the front of the gas tank on and then the tank can be lifted up out of the frame. So now we got to pull the fuel hose off the fuel pump and so you got to pull the cover off and then just grab a set of needle nose pliers and hold that the two clips together and pull the the hose right off of it. The wire can be unplugged from the fuel pump and then we're gonna pull the two bottom bolts out so we can get the retaining um, strap off of it. And then once all the bolts and the washers are off of the tank, the tank can be pulled off the bike now that the tank's off the bike, we can have access to the valve cover. So you want to wipe off as much dirt as you can get. And then after that, we're going to pull the spark plug cap off and the vent hose on the valve cover. And then the two bolts holding the valve cover on can come off. And then the valve cover is ready to come off the bike. The crankshaft access plug will need to come out. And once that's out, you'll want to wipe any dirt around the hole there. Now we need to get the motor at top dead center. And so we got to turn the crankshaft over until the dot on the crank gear lines up with the mark on the case. So those two arrows as you can see and if the exhaust rocker arm is free then you'll know that the motor is on the compression stroke and it's at top dead center. Another way to tell if the motor is at top dead center is on the timing chain gear. The two marks on the bottom will be flat with the surface of the head. Now we're going to check the valve clearances. The clearance on the intake valves is 0 .005 inches and the clearance on the exhaust valves is 0 0.011 inches. So when you're putting the feeler gauge in between the rocker and the shim, you'll want to have a little bit of drag, but not too much. So it looks like both these exhaust valves are fine. That clears the spec fine. To measure the valve clearance on the intake valves, you have to put the feeler gauge underneath the cam, in between the cam and the cam bucket. Uh, here I'm trying to put a 0 0.005 in and on both valves it won't go in so I moved to a 0 0.004 so on the left one uh, the 0 0.004 wouldn't go in and then on the right one it, it went in so the right one is still in spec but the left one isn't so the clearance on the intake valves is 0 0.005 and there's a 001 tolerant so you can either go uh, basically a 004 is still within spec so the right exhaust or right intake valve was 004 and the left one was 003 so we're gonna have to reshim the left one and we might as well get the right one back up to 005 as well 
now that we know we got to pull the, the cam out, we got to pull this uh, left motor mount plate off of it so we can get access to the cam and the cam chain. To get the tension off of the timing chain, we're going to have to pull this uh, timing chain tensioner off. The first thing you want to do is loosen up the bolt in the middle because when you're putting the tensioner back on, you'll need that bolt loose. And so just loosen the two outer bolts evenly and the tensioner will come right off. There might be a little bit of oil that comes out, so just wipe that away from the tensioner hole. Now we can go ahead and take the cam caps off. You'll want to do this in a crisscross pattern. Just loosen up each bolt a little bit at a time. And just go until the bolts are all the way out and you can pull the cam caps off. To get the caps off, you'll have to wiggle them back and forth a little bit. And when you're pulling it out, you want to make sure the ring either stays on the cam or stays with the cap because you don't want to drop that down in the bottom end. And also watch for the dowel pins. You don't want those dropping down there either. Now with the cam caps off, we can start to take the cam out. First thing you'll need to do is slide that bearing so it takes a little bit of tension off the timing chain. And now you should be able to take the chain right off the gear and just pull the cam right out. To keep from dropping the chain in the bottom end, I like to just put a screwdriver through it and then also stuff a rag in the hole where the chain is so no dirt or anything else falls down there. Now we can get access to the shims, so you need a magnet to pull the cam buckets out and just make sure not to drop the shims down anywhere. Just get your hand under it and if the shim decides to stay with the valve then that works too. Now we need to figure out what size shims we need. So um, you want to keep the shims separate from each other right from left and so just write down what um, side is which and then write down the clearance that you had on each side so on the right side we had 0.102 millimeters and on the left we had 0 0.076 millimeters and then um, you want to find the difference between um, the, the spec, the actual spec, and what you got or what the clearance was. And so on the right side, the difference was 0 0.018, and on the left, the difference between those two numbers was 0 0.044. So those two numbers that we came up with, the 0 0.018 and the 0 0.044, Basically those numbers we just need to subtract from the shim size to see how much we need to go down in size. So on the left one we had a point or a 1.98 millimeter shim and actually that's um, a 0.1975. If it says 0.98 that's actually just a, a 9.75. And on the right we had a, a 195, so we subtract um, 0 0.018 from 1.95 and we come up with a 193 uh, for the right. And then on the left we're going to do the same and we came up with a 193 also. So the 1.93 that we came up with, that's the size of the shim that needs to go back in. And since uh, a 193 is not made, we have to find the closest size to that, and that would be a 1.925, and that's the size of the shim that I got for both the right and the left. So now that we got the right shims and everything's ready to go, we can start putting them back together. And so <clears throat> just grab a magnet and 
put the shims back in the valves and put some new engine oil on top of there just to lubricate it and you also want to dump some engine oil into the cam buckets and you can install those also now with the shims and the buckets in we can put the cam in so you want to take the rag out and set the cam in there with the lobes facing towards the rear of the bike and you want to slide that the bearing over so we can get the cam chain on and once the cam chains on the gear you can slide that bearing back over now to set the timing you will want to slide that bearing back over so you have room to move the chain around and just move the chain around on the gear until the two marks at the bottom line up with the head and also you want to check the two marks down at the crank the dot on the gear and the arrow on the on the case so with the timing all set we can start assembling the top and so first thing you just want to pour some new engine oil on the cam so now we have to install the two retaining rings onto the cam now you gotta be sure not to drop these anywhere so just put them in the groove on the cam and then we can put the cam cap back on and you gotta make sure that the the ring on the cam lines up with the groove on the cap and then just thread the bolts down a little bit and we can put the other side on it's the same procedure and the cam caps are marked right and left so you want to make sure those are on the correct sides and after that you can tighten down the cam cap bolts in a crisscross pattern just tighten them down lightly and then we can go ahead and torque them the torque spec on these bolts is 12 foot pounds so with the timing set and the cam cap bolts all tightened down and torqued we'll want to check the valve clearances again and so it looks like both intake and exhaust clearances are fine now we can reinstall the cam chain tensioner so you gotta pull the bolt out of the center and then uh, grab a small flat screwdriver and turn that um, the part inside clockwise until it stops and that way the uh, tensioner is wound up and there's going to be no tension put on the chain until you release it so just put the two bolts two outer bolts in evenly until they're all the way threaded in tighten them down and then release take the screwdriver out and it will release the tension or the release the centerpiece and it'll set the tension automatically it also helps if you have the correct tool for holding the centerpiece when you're installing the cam chain tensioner I think you can get these tools from Honda there's a little um, screwdriver type deal alright now we're ready to put the valve cover back in so to slide that in install the bolts and tighten those down and put the valve cover breather on and put the spark plug cap in on the spark plug cap you just want to make sure it it uh, snaps down that way it's you know it's all the way down the left motor mount plate can then be installed and also be sure to install that crankshaft access plug now the gas tanks ready to go back on so you want to install the two bolts the, that plate and the, the retaining uh, strap back on there and the washers go under that plate just be sure of that tighten those down those don't have to be too tight
and then we're going to plug the fuel pump back in and the fuel hose it just clips into the green retaining clip there and put the cap on and the tank can be set back in the frame so now we can just put the front bolt back in and put the tank strap on the back and then reinstall your hour meter if you have one and then we're ready to put the shrouds back on so just put the bolts in lightly get everything lined up and then you can tighten them down For the seat, you want to make sure both the front and the middle hooks are lined up because if you sit on it with those hooks out of place and they'll, they'll break off and your seat will be floppy. So just install the two bolts on the back and then we're done. That's it. Hey, thanks for checking out this tech lesson video. If you want to see the last video where I showed how to clean and re-grease linkage, click this box right here. And as always, stay tuned for more videos similar to this.